so one last thing to add as you're doing these studies is that um, keep in mind that you don't have to match the bounding box to the object that's getting mapped onto the surface. You can actually construct a custom bounding box. So I'd like to show how that would work. Um, the way that we've been working up till now is we would have an object like this and that there would be a bounding box which would automatically um, match its overall limits. But in this case, let's say we wanted to make an object like this, which you can see is actually larger than the, the basic module, so that we want there to be a kind of shingling effect. So what I'll do is use this profile along the bottom as a kind of guide to build a bounding box that's actually smaller than the overall object and then let that reference um, into the box morph. So the way that we'll do that is we need to input a couple of geometries. Um, we'll start by um, inputting the geometry of this panel, going to parameters, uh, geometry, setting that. And then now we want to create our own <coughs> excuse me, our own bounding box um, by extruding this curve. And so what we'll do is we'll input a curve, set that, and then go to the surface menu um, and extrude. Feed the curve into that, and we need to set a direction. So we'll do that by going to the vector menu and choosing Z, and then feeding that in. And then here it's got an input on the left side. We can just use a slider bar just to make it easy. And it doesn't have to be um, super precise. We just want to get kind of uh, near the overall height. So I'll, I'll change the upper limit to maybe 300. So that's about fine like that but you can see that it's extending out beyond the box. And so, so now we just need to um, cap this box because as you can see, it doesn't have any caps on it. So we'll go to surface, utility, cap holes, feed that in. So now we have a capped box. And we'll use that as our reference. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect our existing surface and our existing so reconnect the um, this is the target box and so now we need a, a geometry and a reference box so our geometry is this panel feed that in and then our reference box is going to be this capped box And you can see that what happens is that you get a kind of shingling effect where the panel that's being mapped onto the surface is actually wider than the module itself. And so there's a kind of overlapping that starts to happen. And so this is something that everybody should explore during this exercise um, and see kind of where it might lead. And try different configurations with bounding boxes. Don't just use the kind of off-the-shelf bounding box tool, but see what kinds of opportunities might be opened up by customizing that bounding box.